Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the show. All right, guys, so today we're going to do something a little different. Um, with the recent release of the Borderlands movie, I figured we'd take a look back at uh, McFarlane Toys Borderland figures. Um, now, these came out, um, I believe, came out like 2013 when Borderlands first came out, and it was really big. I don't have all the figures. I know I'm missing a few figures, like Zero, which is a, a, a pretty pricey figure. Uh, but some of these figures are just really well done. The detail is immaculate. There's a few figures uh, in this wave that I never got a chance to do a review of, so it'll give me a chance to do a review of a few of these figures, and... Uh, We'll take a look back at uh, McFarlane Toys and what he was doing before he became the McFarlane Toys of today. Um, and we'll take a look at some of the amazing detail, uh, like I said, uh, McFarlane Toys uh, produced back in, what, 2012, 2013, 2014. I believe this is a mixture of Borderlands 1 and 2. I could be wrong. If you guys know, let me know. It's been a while. It's been a minute. So let's take a look at... Um, um, some of these figures. So we'll take a look at Lilith right here, which is just, just an amazing, amazing figure. The plastic that they used um, wasn't cheap like McFarlane Toys is of today when he does his DC line. The guns and the weapon, the paint apps are immaculate. This is something that I wish McFarlane would focus more on, especially with his DC figures. The paint apps um, would definitely benefit his figures a lot, man. Uh, or the lack thereof, but uh, and even the tattoos as well. The tattoos and the care that went into McFarlane Toys be before McFarlane took over the DC license. Like I've said this before in numerous reviews, like the McFarlane uh, Mortal Kombat figures are so well done. The paint apps are uh, pretty damn good compared to some of the other figures, uh, especially from DC that he has put out. But yeah, the overall detail, I mean, look at the, the belt buckle, the, the leg buckles right there, even painted. Everything on this figure is painted. Like, there's nothing that needs to be added as far as paint is paint missing on this figure. Everything is so well done. Even the her hair, even that her hair has paint on it. Like, you just don't see this on McFarlane toys anymore. So there's Lilith, a figure that I didn't do a review of, but even the gun, like it's like I said, the gun itself. I mean, have you seen a gun or any kind of McFarlane accessory on a DC figure that has just as many paint apps? It has probably about four, maybe five different colors on this gun. <laughs> now you get a McFarlane uh, accessory weapon and it's just one solid color. Um, Handsome Jack, which I actually did a review of way back in the day. He comes with, uh, interchangeable head. He comes with other accessories too. Um, I believe the top of a, a bomb, an atomic bomb, but just look at the detail, man. Look at the detail that McFarlane was doing. What? Not even, no, was it 10 years ago? 10 years ago, maybe over 10 years ago. This is what he was doing. This is what he was producing. And the the plastic as well, man. The plastic just overall, just better quality. And just look at the wash on him. Like, you don't need to add any paint apps to this guy. He's just so well done. The eyes as well. The weapon, once again, the weapon is just amazing. McFarlane did an amazing job with this figure right here. Handsome Jack. Of course, I did a review of this. If you guys want to see a full review of him, he was he was in my McFarlane review. So he's somewhere in there if you guys want to uh, take a look at a, a more in-depth review. Overall, the articulation is actually not that bad on this guy. Head movement. I'll show you the articulation of Lilith. Uh, of course, they used a different, like, harder plastic. So, of course, it's not as uh, flexible as it once was. But you know what? I can only speak for myself. I will take the paint apps over articulation anytime, man, because I'm not a poser. And uh, McFarlane should just stick to what he knows, and that is, you know, adding paint apps, detail. That's what made McFarlane toys. Um, waist swivel. The, toy, the toys of, you know, 
of old school McFarland, the articulation was not that great. Obviously, you can see, you know, uh, but where he lacked in uh, articulation, he's he made up more in paint apps. And then there's the arm right there. Arm. I mean, it's not bad articulation for its time. Swivel right there. And of course, they use a different plastic, more high quality plastic. And of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to pose because it's better plastic. Legs can't really extend out that much. They can't really do splits simply because of the... Uh, they were more interested in detail than they were in articulation. One of my favorite uh, figures from this lineup is Krieg right here, which is so nicely done. Once again, the detail is just great. Uh, articulation, is it is what it is right there. The weapon, I mean, just look at the weapon, bro. I'd much rather have this over great articulation any day of the week. The weapon and then the detail and the wash. On the silver, the iron to make it look silver, which is insane. Now McFarlane gives us, you know, pl plastic that doesn't look like silver. That just looks gray. Same thing with his gold as well. And torso swivel, uh, nothing at the waist. But just look at the detail on his stomach and his abs and his chest. The mask is incredible. Even his bandages on his arms. Look at that. You don't need to do anything to this guy. Legs can extend out that much. It has that weird diamond select uh, gapage right here. But the detail, once again, is just overshadows anything that McFarlane is producing today, man. The belt buckle, everything is so well done. So well painted. The movie... That is released might not be as great, <laughs> but the figures are pretty damn good. It does have a knee swivel right here as well. Let's see. Knee swivel. Yeah, they all swivel, both of the knees. And then there's the back of this guy right here, which I really love. They could have hid this a little bit better with the, the pants, po pant, pants pockets. But nonetheless, I mean, and it's, you look at it and it's, the pegs, they're, they don't, you know, when you're just looking at the figure itself, you're not even paying attention to the pegs. Or the peg holes, should I say. It's not even pegs, it's peg holes. He does have a, a wrist swivel as well. Let's see your head movements. Not too bad. Let's take a look at Tiny Tina. Then we'll take a look at Psycho in a minute. I really like Psycho. Here's Tiny Tina. But even just look at the detail on these figures, man. The bunny ears... And then there's the bunny attached to her. It's just so well done. The little colored grenades right there. The torso. Her range might be a little bit limited because of all the stuff she's got going on. The gun. Even look at the gun. Look at the detail in the gun. The boomstick. Like, man, they just don't make... McFarlane just doesn't do this anymore. Why he went away from this is just beyond me. And these figures were $20 at the time, you know? Actually, they might have been cheaper at the time. There's the range. But just look at the face sculpt. Look how nicely the face is done. Just a great, great job. And then there's the belt, the dynamite. And then here's the back, the backpack. Look at the detail on the backpack. And then her pouch right there, her back fanny pack, the dynamite right there with the with the the bunny on it. Look at that. Can you guys see the detail right there? The bunny in the middle of the dynamite, the timer. The bunny ears are the timer for the dynamite. And then even the bunny is done so nicely, man. I don't think I did a review of uh of Tiny Tina. But look, look at her shoes. The socks, the bandages, and then she has a different color shoe right here as well, the pink. It is articulated. Her ankles are articulated, which is, man, so nice. I like the pink sock right there on this foot, and then the pink shoe on this one. 
and then the knee bend that's kind of all you get you don't get any 90 degree bend and then her legs do kick out that much it's just a great great looking figure man great looking figure all this detail is just amazing let's take a look at the last figure cycle right here which is one of my favorites i just like the, the overall design he kind of has a similar vibe to krieg so let's take a closer look at psycho and that blood right there that is a part of the figure i didn't add anything the dirtiness the wash to him the face the dirty mask head movements not too shabby. His torso, as you guys can see right there, moves kind of awkwardly, but it works. Nothing at the... Oh, yeah, he does have a um, waist swivel. That's pretty nice. And then you come down to the weapon and just look at this beautiful silver piece right here. Really nicely done. Arms are done nicely. Bandages are done nicely. They're different colors. They're not the same color where newer McFarlane would make everything the same color. But look, there's, what, one, two, three, four, five, six different colors of brown and grays and silvers on, on his arm alone. And then you come down to his uh, belt buckle. Even the belt buckle has detail. It, this is all sculpted on, of course, right here. And then the chain, his latch. His arm, even his knuckle right there, his brass knuckle. Then you come around to the back, and then he has the grenades. Look at that. The grenades are actually painted different colors, black and gray. If this was new school McFarlane, they'd be painted the same color, man, unfortunately. And this is what I mean. You know, every time I review a DC figure and you guys hear me complain about the paint apps and or the lack thereof and how... You know, the the old school McFarlane, even though this was done, you know, over 10 years ago, not even 10 years ago, you know, it's still McFarlane, you know, this is what he was doing back in the day. You know what I mean? And this is what I bitch and complain about all the time when I complain about, you know, the new McFarlane toys compared to some of the older stuff. So his arm, uh, it can extend out. It's a little tough. Yeah, there we go. It does extend out outwards um his legs do have the it can extend out that way as well and then the knee bend right there and even the wash on the pants as well look how done look how nicely the pants are done and then the legs can extend that way and even look at that even the cuffs down to the boots just so well done man so well done i miss mcfarland toys and to say that McFarlane can't do articulation and paint apps at the same time is bullshit because these McFarlane Borderland figures is proof that, yes, you can have good articulation and also great paint apps as well and use quality plastic and make quality weapons at the same time. This is what McFarlane was doing just, just a little over 10 years ago, man. All right, guys, there was my little look back. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, look back at uh, McFarlane Toys Borderland figures. Not the complete set, but, you know, you guys get the gist of how great McFarlane Toys was back in the day, man. And why McFarlane Toys became what they became. I think uh, they did an amazing job. You know, what happened during that time, you know, where McFarlane Toys took a weird turn and... You know, they they don't make the quality stuff that they used to. Not to complain about, you know, some of his newer stuff because I still buy some of his newer stuff and I still like him. Um, but this, you know, when you hear me speak of McFarlane toys and the la lack of paint apps, you know, this is what I mean. You know, old school McFarlane toys just kind of put, you know, the new stuff to shame. And, and it's kind of a shame because of that. All right, guys, uh, if you tuned in to watch this little review, let me know what you make of this uh, lineup of these figures. Uh, did you guys see the movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I just want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next review. Peace out.